and shooting people who didn't do what they were yeah. told. Welcome to Cold War Conversations. If attack is imminent, you will hear the attack sound like this. If the fallout warning sounds are heard, they will be like these. Buy food well wrapped or in tins. By the way, don't forget your tin opener and bottle opener. Regional seats of government, or RSGs, were a UK solution to disperse the machinery of government into the provinces, where there would be a greater chance of survival after a nuclear attack. Today, we speak to Andrew, who was assigned a role in an RSG, and details his experiences on a week-long training course at the Civil Defence College at Easingwold in Yorkshire during the 1980s. There's some chilling details of the scenarios they had to prepare for. Now, if you're enjoying your weekly dose of Cold War conversations, I'm asking if you could support us for three US dollars a month to help keep us on the air. That's about 60 pence or 75 US cents per episode, or perhaps a coffee or two a month. Now, that's what I call good value. Plus, you'll become the envy of your friends with that sought-after Cold War Conversations coaster too. Just go to coldwarconversations.com slash donate. If you can't donate financially, then you can also help us by leaving a written review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to this podcast, as well as sharing us on social media. Andrew starts with the surprising circumstances of his first notification of his regional seat of government role. We welcome Andrew to our Cold War conversation. In 1986, I became the district manager for the employment service, looking after the job centres in Leicestershire and Northamptonshire. I was based in the, uh, in the district office in Charles Street in Leicester and I, I can't remember precisely but probably I, was, I started there in October of 86. After sometime in the following year uh, the, 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 the regional director said to me your job carries the additional responsibility of being the job centre person in the regional seat of government right, so, in East Midlands. So did you was that in your job description when you applied for the role, it, or you were just informed that uh, this was it, another duty? It was, not, it, it was not in the job description. <laughs> uh, I had... Um, I had no... My, my predecessor... All, all I, my predecessor was ex royal engineers and had some military experience. And I just thought when he when he left and I took over, I I took over the role even though I hadn't served in the, in the armed forces. Right, right. So they sent you on a on this course. It was a week long course. Um, what what was the actual title of your role in the? the regional seat of I'm government. I'm not sure I know even to this day. <laughs> but it was anything to do with, it was anything, because it was the job centre service, it was anything to do with uh, labour supply, recruitment, uh, and I think to a lesser extent, uh, any, any relief or humanitarian effort. Right. But it was, pre- pre- it was said to... It, what was said to me was pretty well limited to, you know, you're, you're in the business of managing uh, recruitment and, and services, so that's, that'll be your post in this regional seat of government. Right. That proved not to be the case. <laughs> right. So um, how did you get to Easingwold? Was it train, car? As far as I can remember, I, I took an official car. Right. Right. So I arrived Monday morning and left 
Friday afternoon. Okay. And, and it you... was it was probably winter, although I can't I can't recall exactly. Yeah. One significant thing about this is that every other course I've been on with Her Majesty's government, you came away with reams of paperwork. Mm. There was no paperwork at all from from this course. There was probably a letter that I had to take to get there and get to lodge and to 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 book in. Mm. But there was no other there was no other paperwork to say this is what you've learnt or this right. is what you should have learnt. Right, right. So what was the content of the course? I mean this was a one week course, so presumably it was quite intensive. It was it was intensive. Uh, it was in probably classically it was in two parts. The first part the first couple of days were lectures by um, probably by scientists, probably uh, people from the scientific civil service about um, nuclear war, uh, the atomic bomb, you know, what happens when it's strong, what happens to buildings, what happens to people. So the first, the first day or two, we, uh, the, the attendees and I were in sort of receiving information. That moved very quickly into, I think, what would now be called role play. Right. I, I don't think it was called role play at the time, but we were we were in a we were in a we were in a room where we could receive television programs and radio broadcasts, and that play from that point on, that played out various scenarios that um, uh, war 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 was imminent. The Russians had, had, were invading West Germany. The uh, the British Army had responded by uh, battlefield thermonuclear weapons, uh, and then and then the the Russians had launched a, an all-out nuclear attack on Great Britain. Right. So these were like dummy news program, TV they were, programs. They were. They were. Yeah. They didn't feel. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't have used the word dummy. Yeah. They didn't feel like that. It was. It was. It was very absorbing. Yeah. I would say. It, it, I mean, you, you could sort of think, well, this isn't really going on because I'm in a, a, a strange room in a strange building in North Yorkshire, yeah. and and this is just. A, this is just. A, just a drama, but it, in, in fairness to the the course, it didn't come it didn't come along like that. It was like a sort of condensed what might have been in might have been several weeks' news condensed into a number of hours until we got to the point where, as I say, where uh, nuclear war uh, became, felt like it had become a reality. And were there known people in these TV broadcasts? I mean, were they using BBC news readers or anything like that? Or not, were they... not that I can remember. Right. They were probably unknown actors to the best of yeah. my recollection. Yeah. OK. And when you say that the, the, the first part of the week you had the scientific advisors, I mean, presumably they were talking about the hydrogen bomb as well and the sort of the I, I, big devastation of, of that I sort don't, of I don't rem, I don't remember that they probably did yeah. I, I I just remember that the examples that would were drawn from Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki so it was it, they, it was much there was perhaps not to frighten us too much that there, there wasn't I don't remember explicit reference to these were just you know Hiroshima and Nagasaki were pretty tiny bombs, and now we've got great big ones. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the it, Hiroshima and Nagasaki it, would be classified as tactical. Yes, yeah. It, but it was very, in, in today's jargon, it was very sort of evidence-based. We're not talking about things that might happen or yeah. could happen. This is what happened in Japan in 1945, right. and this is what we would expect to happen to buildings in Leicestershire. Yes. In 1987. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just surprised that they were, you know, talking in 
in those sort of terms, but I think you're possibly right. They don't want to scare the horses too much by, you know, yeah. <laughs> saying actually the level of devastation is going to be far greater than we yeah. described. If, 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 it, if, it, if it was talked about that, my mind <laughs> cut it out. Yeah. 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 So, in because I, I know that there were these various fra- phases that the, the civil defence or the local government organisations had to prepare for, which was sort of like the, the lead up to war, conventional conflict, and then nuclear war. What actions were you expected to take in those different segments? D- I'm not sure I remember very. I'm no, not sure I very remember enough. very very clearly. The only thing, one thing I do remember, was um, the the production of a map from we we'll call it Russian intelligence, showing the targets in the United Kingdom. Right. So we were, we and we were sort of expected to prepare for drum for. Bombs, missile strikes on on some of these places, mm-hmm. which could be anywhere the length and breadth of breadth of Britain. Yeah. But obviously, g- given that I was uh, that sense part of the East Midlands, would be part of the East Midlands team. Paid particular attention to the targets in East Midlands, mm-hmm. which were were the major cities, centres of manufacturing, um, for example, Dar- Rolls-Royce and Derby, mm-hmm. uh, and, the, uh, and the airfields in, in Lincolnshire. Right. So I think it was just to get us into a, a state of mind, and I remember another example as well, in a state of mind that it wasn't just, it wasn't just the cities that would be targeted and therefore oh, you could lull yourself to think we'll be safe in the uh, in the countryside. Mm. So there was a uh, in 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 Lancashire. There's actually a um, on the west coast, which you think might be away from nuclear fallout. Uh, there's actually a, a Royal Navy radio station, which was marked by the Russians as as a prime target. Right. So I think that that's as as to what as to what actually. In practical terms, preparation is supposed to. to I, I, I probably have no. I have no clear idea. <laughs> no, and that, that's fair enough. I completely accept that. I am asking for impossible levels of, uh, of detail here. So, in this room where you're doing the role play, was there somebody who was basically the regional commissioner, and various other people were playing the sort of roles that would be within a regional yes, seat and, of government? And as it turned out, yes, there were there were people from. I'm sure there were people from the military and the emergency services, and uh, in the and like along, along with the emergency services, the auxiliary. Long St John's ambulance. I'm sure all those people, fire. I'm pretty sure the fire service is represented because I remember uh, the fire service man having to come up with, in terms of preparation, he had to come up with a dispersal plan yeah. that the fire the, the fire vehicles couldn't be left in the city centres. They had to be brought to the edge of t- towns. Yeah. I sort of remember remember that. And and in terms of individual roles for some reason perhaps because they couldn't think of anything else better that I ought to be doing I ended up sort of as keeping the war diary right or recording what we, I suppose yes recording what people were doing yeah and, and like like the fire service chief yeah we, we dispersing the the fire engines right. and there were probably similar things for the the hospitals and yeah. the ambulance service but yeah. I, I can't remember any specific action. Yeah, yeah. So you can't remember any more details well, from that was, war diary. You were, you were. It keeping. was, it was, it was very. This was. At some point, we moved. We moved from being given the talks to seeing the, the, um, the movement to war, to being a, it being an interactive thing where we were receiving. Where we were receiving messages right. from 
central government. I, I don't remember messages coming the other way, so receiving messages from central government about what we were supposed to do. Right. So I suppose basically I was I was writing those those down. Yeah. Yeah. And and and, okay. and then probably passing the message the messages were then passed on to the emergency services and and the local authorities. Right. Because uh, I remember one, uh, I think in retrospect, one very bizarre set of dialogues uh, about Hinckley mm -hmm. in Leicestershire, um, where a large number of uh, Asians had been killed, Hindu Asians, and uh, the the scenario was that they these were being uh, these were being buried in mass graves, mm -hmm. but and the, but the Hindu leaders had asked for them to be burned. This is a slightly ironic yeah. Yeah. scenario here because yeah, yeah. they they probably were burnt anyway. But yeah. that's uh, and, and then we I think I'm like, that was obviously came within my sort of field of. of responsibility and what was I going to do about this and the short answer or even the long answer was well nothing you know I mean that it was yeah. it was all we it was all, we were very sorry but it was all we could do was to put the bodies in a big hole in the ground yeah we, we weren't able to but for some reason that that dialogue communication fell to fell to me yeah yeah, and yeah. that's sort of that's yeah. one episode I I, re, yeah. I remember. Yeah. So well, essentially, I get. I guess the argument would be is our labour force is limited. It's got other priorities, and this isn't one of them. Yeah. I, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, I well, think that's that's sort of yeah. 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 Post event justification, yeah. but uh, and yeah, obviously you you being in charge of the employment aspect. I mean, you were presumably said, well, there's X percent of casualties, and therefore, did you have to then devise how you were going to divide up the available labour force to deal with the uh, post attack? I, I would say probably, although <laughs> I don't remember doing. Yeah, I don't remember doing that. But there was, uh, uh, as with any, as with any. Government activity. There were a lot. There was a lot of data flowing yeah. in and out, and, yeah. and central government wanting data. I think central government yeah. wanting data. Yeah. And, yeah, which was collated from the police and emergency services, and, yeah. and for about uh, yeah, obviously about casualties and mm. uh, yeah, yeah, dead and, and casualties in hospital and, yeah. and what the. What the consequences of yeah. those were, as I've, as I've said. Yeah, and I mean, it was interesting you commenting about the the, the Hindu scenario. Then were there other scenarios that were introduced, like I don't know, peace protesters or or anything like that that you can recall? I can't recall any. I, yeah. I think I just think that because I just think it was because Leicester was the home to a considerable number of Asian people yeah. and I as a, the district manager worked pretty well all the time with, with Asian communities yeah. then it was sort of testing out that scenario yes. with, with me because like I was the you know I was the in inverted commas the expert on on what's now called diversity, and I, mean, yeah. I, I did yeah. I did other thing I did I did other real things with the community, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the particularly in the wake of the civil disturbances. Yeah. So I think it was just a, it was a bit of sort of typecasting, yes. and maybe other people with different roles were were t the scenario was tested yeah. with them. Yeah, yeah. And it, during this training course, w were there anything that sort of stands out where you just thought, oh my goodness, I hadn't even thought that I'd have to deal with that or an anything that sort of stands out aside from the examples you've already <laughs> given me? Uh, I think without, be without being glib or perhaps just being unimaginative, then uh, not, not really. Right. Uh, 
I mean, I think the other thing that stands out, which is where we st started our, our in introduction, was the visit to the regional seat of government in York. Right. Which, which in in some ways, made it more real than the than the um, than the television than the mock television broadcasts yes. and the I interactive radio dialogue. Right. And that was part of the course, was That it? was part of the course. We were allowed, and I think it was probably the last afternoon, the Thursday afternoon. Yeah, we were allowed sort of time out of the hothouse yes. to go and see what, where the real, what, where, we, where we would have been working should, should a, a right. nuclear war have occurred. And what was that visit like? Uh, it was pretty stone-cold sobering. Can you just take me through how, how that visit worked? Well, I think, yeah, we, we, got on, we probably got on a bus, we got on a coach, and yeah. we got off outside the regional seat of government, and this is the regional seat of government, and not many people are allowed in here, yeah. and don't tell anybody you've been in. Right. And you go through, you know, there's a lot of concrete here. I mean, t I think somebody said to me later, it is partially above ground, but there's a lot of concrete here, and you go through these steel doors, and you go through anonymous corridors that are straight out to Doctor mm. Who. Yeah. Uh, and you, you do feel... I mean, I'm, I'm slightly prone to claustrophobia anyway, which is not exactly <laughs> ideal for being in a regional seat of government. No, I would have thought they would have asked that pretty early on, to be honest. <laughs> uh, they didn't. Uh, and I asked them, when I, when I was in there, I th or, or afterwards, I asked them that, is there any psychometric testing? Yeah. For people, and they just said, "No, it's pay and rations." Yeah, you know, you're, yeah. you're nominated to do yeah. it. It's very British. You're yeah. nominated to do it, yeah. so you can do it. So I didn't sort of, I didn't pursue it because no. there's no, there was, I felt there was no, no need. So yeah, so you go further down these uh, anonymous tunnels, well, anonymous corridors, but you know the tunnels because they're underground. And yeah, then you go into various rooms, and I remember the uh, the the BBC studio with the, the radio. Was it said the yeah the regional commissioner can broadcast them here, um, and then you go into then they showed you uh, the accommodation, um, which is pretty basic as as I recall, and and not very enticing, uh, and then. Uh, yeah, and then there's the sort of the office, and it's like, it's like I described it as an upside down government office. Right. Instead of instead of it going upwards, it went downwards. <laughs> but it's all it's all a, it's always all the usual government furniture, furnishings. Yeah. And the on the, this is your desk, you know, your desk chair. Uh, an in tray and an out tray, and I, I, I was quite, I don't know, whether flippant or uh, you would might call it, you know, I thought, what, you know, you're in, an, you're in a, a nuclear bunker, why on earth do you need an in tray and an out tray? Yeah. And, and yeah. because I, I, I asked a question and 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 I got a, I got a sort of straightforward answer. You know, it's for, well, you're there to deal with problems. Messages will come into you. Yeah. You'll write the answers. Yeah. Or ring up. I mean, it's a pretty. I've, in fairness, I it's a pretty sophisticated telecoms and communication mm -hmm. system yeah. down there. So you will compose the answer and you'll send it. You'll either get it. Transmitted over telex, or, or you'll ring some, you'll ring somebody up, and I think at, at that point I sort of um, stopped, stopped questioning. Yeah, yeah, and and York was the the RSG that you would have been sent to. No, no, the the RSG in East Midlands, I think, was in Loughborough. Right. Okay. So, so they were just we showing just you an example ju one yes, that was yeah, near to East Midlands. Yeah. But right. they said they're all they're all they're, they're all like this. Right. Yeah. Have you visited one of the uh, preserved ones? No. Since? No, I haven't. I will have to take you to Hat Green at Nantwich. Right, fine. 
Yeah. It would be really interesting yeah. to walk around yeah. with, with yeah. you. Well, there. we can do a sort of follow-up yeah, on, yeah. on the sort of yeah. outside broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be delighted yeah. to see you there yeah. as well, because yeah. it, it, it would really yeah. sort of bring, bring yeah. the place alive. Yeah. But anyway, I, di I digress slightly there. Um, so, y you know, you, you'll take around the RSG, and this sounds like this is the last part of the course. Yes, yeah, I think there was a sort of, probably the Friday morning, there was a sort of... Uh, a, a summing up and a, you, you a fairly perhaps an evaluation mm -hmm. um, uh, in which case I've prob you know I've probably said similar things that I've said to you yeah the the, the television broadcasts were very realistic mm -hmm. yeah seeing the RSG was I, I would put as an essential part of essential part of the course yeah. So yeah. those were the two. Yeah. Those were the two bits that I would sort of give ticks to and, and some of the other was some of the other was filling. And I think that if I was I mean I it later in my career I did quite a lot of management training. Mm. I mean if I'd been doing if I'd been running the course, I think I would have um, had a slightly different approach to the psychology of it. Um, because I think you you picked up one one flaw perhaps was that you were working with people you'd never met before, and even, and you were never going to meet again. Whereas uh, I mean, uh, as as the job centre service matured, we put a lot of emphasis on team working, and and you could you could actually run a course. With, with the people who would make the team in any given, in any given region. Yes. So it did. So the, the truth with that, it did feel a bit sort of tick box. So we can say, you know, Andrew's been on the the course now, mm. but how he how he interacted with you know the his fellow officials or commissioners is just an unknown, just an unknown quantity. Yeah. So presumably you were staying on site during this course yes, as well. Yes, a com yes, it was a residential course, fairly standard at the time, originating, well, probably originating way back, but my comparisons were, were predominantly with the civil service college where you went to, uh, where you went to Sunningdale, where the college was for a week or fortnight's course. You stayed on site. So did you socialise with your other attendees I, I in the I, evenings? I suppose I must have done, but I have no, I have no, it, they don't leave any impression on me, <laughs> I, I'm afraid. Well, I, that, it, that, uh, yeah, that's a shame, because when it's, I was just intrigued, what did you, you know, what did, did you we discuss talk about the at content? Night? And um, I'm really, really, really pushing me on this. I, I suppose in a, in a, a backhanded way of answering it, we, we didn't sort of break out and go to the pub, which was usually on residential courses, would have been the norm, to be honest. You wouldn't have stayed on site all four, no, at least I very rarely have. <laughs> <laughs> on residential courses, now you know, we're we, getting we, to the truth. That's Andrew. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't remember whether it was discouraged or, or we just, or we were apathetic, socially apathetic. I don't, I don't know. Do you but think it was because the content was so sobering that you each to their own thoughts on it? And, no, and I think we were just that. lazy. Right. Oh, okay. Socially <laughs> it lazy. Was yeah, rather than, yeah. Uh, yeah. No. I will be. Yeah. No. There is. There isn't. It's a different glib answer. If, yeah. if I may. The only. The, the only. Th we we had meals on site, and I did remember because um, we were each allocated our own napkin, our own piece of cloth, fabric napkin. Yes. And it went in especially, they all went in specially numbered set of pigeonholes. Right. So you, you know, if you were, if your napkin was in pigeonhole number 14, yeah. then you had to take it from there before the meal 
and return it there after the meal. And what do you think was behind that? <laughs> Apart from some sort of autism, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it was... I felt it... I felt, and um, it was very regimented. Yeah. I mean, I said at the outset, I, I was selected in, in spite of my lack of military experience. Mm. Uh, and, uh, but I have done... I think before then I had done work with the with the army and with the air force, and it reminded. With the air force, you stayed on station, and it just reminded me of yeah. like my visits, work with the the air force and yeah. the and the armed services, and I think it, it was a it was a somewhat strange way of trying to instil a sense of discipline into some people who may not have any sense of discipline. Yes. Or, yeah. or, or may yeah. have too great a sense of anarchy. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> because I was never, I mean, I was never asked, was I, about the, I mentioned about the claustrophobia. Yeah. I was never asked about, you know, did I support CND, mm. which seemed a really, which obvious seemed an question. obvious question, you know. I could have got in, I could have got in the bunker and, said, oh, this is all a waste of time, let's just open the doors. Yeah. And anybody, you know, will go outside and die with the rest of them. Mm. Uh, which I think would have been a sort of CND approach. Yeah. So it was never, it was never... So um, you were never asked, are you a member of the Communist Party or any, you know... Like, well, not at, not at that stage. I mean, I, when I was recruited, there was a fairly high level of right. security. But uh, um, it that was a... I suppose that was a, a, a practical assessment, but what was missing here mm -hmm. was an a, assessment of your emotions. Yes. Yeah. So if if you'd been a member, if you'd been a member of CND, then oh, I'll rephrase that. Anybody who had been a member of CND would have a different set of emotions than somebody who served in the Royal Air Force. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting because, you, you know, you're talking about, you know, sort of like psychological assessment and emotional, you know, assessment as well. And I yeah. interviewed a guy who served on Polaris nuclear submarines and I asked the question is, did they ask whether you were claustrophobic? And no, they didn't. No. They waited until you were on one of these mm. things to see whether you were, you were able to hack it mm. or not. Which I, I, I did find really, really surprising. So d you said that when, when you were recruited, i.e. into the employment agency. Yeah, into the civil service, the, yeah. Into the civil service, was that Official Secrets Act yeah. and all of those yeah. bits yeah. and pieces yeah. as well? Okay. Yeah, but that was 20 years, that was 20 years earlier. Yeah. A, a, lot, a lot had happened in, in politics before then. Sorry, since, sorry, since then, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, okay. I wasn't a supporter of CND. I think otherwise yeah. I might have been even more <laughs> schizophrenic no, about well, the episode, the experience. Yeah, yeah. So the the closing moments of the course, they don't give you any paperwork. They just say, right, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Don't call us. We will call you. That's or... it. That's it. Yeah. You'll get a, you'll get a you'll a, a letter. A letter. I remember, I remember, it was a letter, not a telegram. Or yeah. A letter will arrive. Yeah. With your instructions, right. to which I somewhat flippantly added, get on your bicycle and cycle to the nearest RSG. Yeah. Because I mean, the pla the, the the theory was there would be a transition to war. It wouldn't be in a a bolt from the blue attack. It would be a there would be some level of build up. Yes. So that they you know they would know. Yes to inform you by post, hopefully first class rather than second. Yeah, yeah, but I remember the, I did thinking about it, well, great faith in the, in the, in the Royal Mail to yeah. set, send a letter, you know, report RSG yeah. immediately. Yeah. So as you drive away in your official car, yeah. what, can you remember what your thoughts were about what, what you went through? I think, yeah, I mean, it was very, it was, it, it it was a sort of differing experiences. Some of it was, as I said, was you know it was it was fascinating to s go inside the regional seat of government. And for somebody like me who likes collecting experiences, I I appreciated that. Um, 
they, they, the conduct and presentation of parts of the course were excellent. Got into a lot of trouble to create this scenario leading up to war, mm. and and then continue the continue the the dialogue in in real time. You you know you were getting messages in real time. You're supposed to respond in 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 real time. So that was on on the on the one hand. On the other hand, it was quite surreal and I, I just thought, you know, Monty Python's Flying Circus. Yeah, yeah. This can't be real, you know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, in some ways, I didn't accept the evidence of my own eyes. Right. If, if you'd received the letter, what do you think you would have done? I, I don't know at the time. If I received it now, I would, I would pretend I never received it. Yeah, lost in the post. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The whole the whole thing is. Uh, I know it, it. I know it's it's less likely now. Far probably far less likely now. But the whole thing was so. I suppose we did. Going back to your earlier question about did we have any off piste conversation? Mm. We did. Yes. Probably. So we sat at around at night, probably and had a pint or two, and and I think the option, the informal out, unofficial outcome, was. If if nuclear war is going to occur, just get, get in a plastic bag and tie yourself up and stay there so you don't, you know, litter the planet. Yeah, yeah, or stay with your family. Yeah, rather yeah. than leave yeah. them out there. Yes. Did they give any indication how long you might have to stay in that RSG? Not that I can remember. No, no, no. 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 Okay. And they were, they were probably they probably told you something, you know that. We got enough food and water and, yeah. every, and fuel for two weeks or four weeks, but I think I, I just found that under disbelief. Yes, yeah, no, absolutely. So after you complete this course, you don't participate in any drills or rehearsals or anything? No, that, that's, 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 that's it. That's it until I met you. Wow. That's, that, it's just all, yeah, yeah. It's still all filed away. I did... You know, just in, to exonerate myself a little bit, when, obviously when I retired, I brought a lot of papers with me, some of which I kept, most of which I've thrown away, but, and, and I've been back over those, and there's, there's, I have, there's no written record right. of anything. Well, there's a written record of Easing World, isn't there? There's very little, there's no written record of the course, yes. as opposed to the bricks and mortar or yeah. concrete and steel yeah it, it's really interesting you know you, you you saying about you know not receiving any paperwork at, at the end of the course so it was you know and because you you know from from your managerial experiences training is only good if you actually then Yes. Use those yes. skills yeah. on a regular yeah. basis yeah. otherwise they just yeah. you know it, yeah. it just all, all fades away yeah um, but obviously, some of that you can recall, you know the. Yes, some and I have. I have of that um, so yes, in, in in fairness to everybody, I think yes, I have sort of um, drawn on it at, at other times in the past, and it almost into the present now, because where where I live now in South Wales, we're prone to flooding, and they set up a flood group, and I offered to be on it because mm. of the emergency training yeah. that I'd had. So it, it isn't it isn't sort of to well nothing is totally wasted. So that well, isn't totally wasted. Well no, and I think you're right because I think some of this training then evolved into the emergency planning training and some of these headquarters continued to be used in later years for you know natural disasters yeah. or and, and that's local. what we that's what we're still doing continuing yeah. locally. It's really interesting, you know, what, what you were describing there, because I think that the other thing is, is describing the technology at the time as well, because, you know, ob obviously mm. there was no internet. It was either telephone uh, or runner, messenger, you yeah. know, somebody physically yeah. passing. Telex, passing them, telex, telex we had, yeah. yeah. And, and fax and, to some degree. Yeah, I, I can't remember if it's fax or telex, yeah. but... Um, uh, and as I say, the other thing I thought was quite sophisticated was the the, the broadcast studio. 
Yes. There, there, was, there was a lot of, I suppose in all that I've said, there's a lot in there about how do we control the civil population. Yeah. And keeping them informed, whether it's of truth or lies, mm. was an important, you know, it, it, there's a lot of it, mm. don't panic. And, yeah. Um, so that was a key part of the course, was it? Was it? it? Was, was yeah, trying was, to keep the civil population yeah, almost so, docile. Yes, yeah, sta- certainly stable, certainly yeah. stable, stable, acquiescent, uh, no mass migration of, of people mm-hmm. into the from the towns to the countryside or or, from, or vice versa. Yeah. But particularly, no, yeah, getting people to to stay where where they were. Yeah, and and. And also uh, managing food supplies as well. I remember, yeah. m- m- remember now. Yeah. And arming, uh, as well as the military, arming the police. Right. And and shooting people who didn't do what they were yeah. told. Yeah. And how much of that was mentioned in in the course? Probably quite a bit. Right. Yeah. Probably quite. So a the bit. imposition of martial law and the shooting of looters. Yes. And, yeah. And that, that was all mentioned. It was just sort of wasn't high in my responsibilities no. Yeah. yeah no because i mean have you seen the film threads i think so yes yeah where i, I mean there's there's a you know there's various classic scenes there but there's one with the traffic warden armed with a rifle but it's that whole imposition of martial law and the shooting yeah that was that was so. quite yeah that was mentioned that, that wasn't hidden that wasn't hidden that was that was quite a, quite explicit right yeah. Whether right. I would have shot anybody ever, yes. Is a, well, we we weren't asked to do it. We were just we were just asked told to, tell, to somebody give, tell somebody else to tell do somebody it. Tell somebody else to do, do it. it. Yeah, but yeah. I think that it, in some ways that was sort of still felt quite abstract. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah, still sort of conceptual mm. and not and not and not real. Mm. But certainly, control of the civil population. Mm. But it's it's really interesting because that's the sort of. Or, or one of the areas which is one of the most, well, aside from a nuclear attack anyway, but that most, the most frightening is that breakdown of society yeah, um, and lawlessness and, and all of that sort of side of things. And it, it's interesting, you know, just hearing about yeah, well, how the that, whole, that the... was, it was always going to be a balancing act to try and keep the population where you wanted them and keep them... As you said, acquiescent. Yeah. Rather than them become, you know, it become anarchy. Mm. Yeah, that was that was definite definite message that yeah. yeah came came out. Yeah, and just other bits coming out because we didn't touch on martial law and the mm-hmm. shooting, and that's that sort of fired a little memory. It did. There, You're somewhere but, sitting around that table, but, writing up the war diary. You know, today we today we shot some looters. So you can you remember that as being in the in the yes, war yeah, diary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you like what you're hearing, sign up to our email list at coldwarconversations.com. And we have further photos, videos and information on this episode in our show notes, which will show as a link in your podcast app. Don't forget, if you'd like to get one of those Cold War Conversations coasters, help keep us on the air then head over to coldwarconversations.com slash donate. And if you can't wait for the next episode, do visit our Facebook discussion group where listeners just like you continue the Cold War Conversation. Just search for Cold War Conversations in Facebook. Thank you very much for listening. It is really appreciated. Goodbye.